Greatest Cards of All Time podcast number 51. It's Howie Fox, number 180 in the 1951 Bowman set. What a good looking card. I love this looking card. I love the look of this card. Just the, the picture, the picture quality, the painting, I guess I, I should say. Painting? More paintings? More paintings. Actually, yes. So they used the same printing technique in 1951 as they used in 1950. I recognize that. An artist colorized basically a black and white photo. Cincinnati Reds pitcher won 11 and lost 8 in 1950 for a 579 winning percentage and a 433 ERA. Not too bad for the old-timey veteran started organized baseball in 1943 with Birmingham. So he's been around a while. Unique little statistic here for Howie Fox. The one and only player to play for the AAA Baltimore Orioles and also for the Major League Baltimore Orioles what? team. Right. The only one? The only player because it went from a minor league team in 1953 to a major league team in 1954. Okay. He was the one and only player that they kept from the minor league team and actually stuck to play with the Orioles in 54. Talk to me about the 8.9 war on this gentleman. Well, you know, his career stats were not the best. His war is 8.9, a record 43 and 72, and an ERA of 4.33, so not the best. And I, I kind of want to go into his, his background a little bit, but before we, we dig into that, I just wanted to compare 51 Bowman to 50 Bowman. This, again, a lot of this comes from the bubble gum card war. Um by Dean Han Hanley. We we've talked about that book before. Very cool book. This set, actually, there's 324 cards in the set. The 51 Bowman is a little bit bigger than the 50. So the 50, they use the same pictures as they did in 50 for 51, uh, and 51 for 50. The size of the card is slightly bigger. So it's now two and one sixteenth by three and one eighth inches before in 1950 it was a square shape isn't the photo even a little closer i don't know if it's closer or in law you know it's it's maybe closer we're, we're gonna have to do a comparison when we talk about some 50 and 51 uh another difference though other than the shape is also they have the name on the front of the card so 1950 it was just a picture no name 1951 they add the black box with the white lettering Obviously, it now has their name on there. It made it easier when you looked at a card to figure out who it was. In 1950, when you looked at a Bowman, you may or may not have known who the player was. Obviously, this, this takes that right out of the equation. Clearly know who it is. Howie Fox, a right-handed pitcher. He was born March 1st, 1921 in Coburg, Oregon. That's about 10 miles from Eugene. The population was only 270. He was six out of nine kids. All seven brothers actually played basketball for the local high school. We've been hearing a lot about these Pacific Northwestern baseball players. That play, that play basketball, too. That play basketball, too, <laughs> yeah. And actually, 1930s, his 1937-38 year in high school, they actually had a female coach and went on to win the state championship. So that was the first time okay. ever Oregon had a female coach for a male team boys team that actually went on to win the state championship really? and it was a small school there were 30 students 17 boys so 1937 38 their basketball team their whole high school only had 17 boys four of the boys were actually fox brothers that were on the team that went on to win the state championship. After they won the state championship, he did receive a scholarship offer. He went to Oregon, did not graduate, did not letter, ultimately ended up playing some amateur basketball in 1940 through 1942, while also playing some minor league baseball. And we've heard this before too, where some of these guys early on, they played basketball, they played baseball. In 1941 with this Cascade League, he actually hit 434. So he, he wow. pitched, he played the infield. Not only did he play basketball, he played multiple positions in baseball. In 1942, in the same league, he led strikeouts. So 1941, he leads the league 
well, I don't know if he, he led the league in hits, and he actually hit 434. In 1942, he leads the league in strikeouts. In 1943, he's actually signed to a minor league contract at the year at the age of 22. Yeah, then he was called up by the Reds after a 19 and 10 pitching record too. So he could definitely pitch, and that's interesting. He could uh, swing the bat also. He actually made his major league debut September 17, 1944, in Forbes Field. He pitched a scoreless bottom of the eighth. In 1944, he made only one other appearance. Then one year in Philadelphia in 52 and one year in Baltimore in 54. So he did tack on a couple of extra teams after the Reds, but very late in his career. Right. So 53, he was again, that was when he was with the minor league team, the Baltimore Orioles that then okay, converted yeah. to the so professional that all, team. That all checks out. That all right. lines up. Right. In 1954, again, he was the only player that, that has done that, where he played with the minor league team and the AAA and then the professional team in 1954. And what I thought was kind of cool, the Orioles kept him on their roster in 55, and it seems like they did that just so he could reach the 10 years in Major League Baseball. So right after he reached that 10 years, they cut him. He then signed with the San Antonio Mission Missions on May 6, 1955, which was affiliated with the Orioles. The photo on this card really opens up a unique view of this player, Howie Fox. What a stern look on his resting face here on that on the photo of the card there. He looks I like, like a tough that guy, card. right? That card's sick. He looks like a tough guy. Six foot three, 210 pounds, so he was not a little dude. Wasn't small. Definitely not small. Going back to his minor league, so he signed as a player coach, which again, that's another thing that we've talk, talked about, discovered a lot of times. Signs as a player coach? Yeah, later on in their career, it seems like they'll go down to the minor leagues, they'll still play, they'll also coach. And that's what happened when he signed with the San Antonio Missions. He ended up opening a bar. A tavern. Why September. does that always happen? The bar? The tavern? Or <laughs> uh, what? Retiring. And then finally hanging them up and uh, I'm going to open a bar. Well, you know. Or I, I'm going to attend <laughs> bars. Somehow I, they're just going to be stuck behind a bar for the rest of the It does life. seem like a lot. Well, it didn't last very long, unfortunately, for him. Because shortly after he opened the bar, he was killed. He was stabbed. What? Three, yeah. So... I think a lot of these guys probably drank as baseball players, so that's maybe why they end up with the taverns and telling baseball stories. He opens up the tavern September, October 8th, 1955. A few college students stop in the bar. They get kicked out. They come back. They're throwing rocks at the bar or something like that. So Howie and his other tavern investor, they, they go outside to try to break it up. Ultimately, he gets stabbed three times and dies oh my early in the morning right early the next morning he passed away and he was only at age 34 